Did you ever think a show like TCAP would ever turn eerie? Well, that's exactly what happened when one day, the crew received a call and heard this. My little angel, I love you baby so much. You know what that sounds like? A crazy beast on the loose. Which means the crew were now tasked with nabbing this sinister freak before it was too late. There was no time to waste. The crew had to be ready for what would be known as one of the craziest things to have ever taken place. Before getting into the details, let me give you a quick glimpse into what a dictionary definition of scumbag looks like. Yup, that's him. If you fail to recognize this face, then perhaps you would be more familiar with this one. This is the vile monster himself, Michael Gentile. And what he's up to now will leave you surprised. This 64-year-old bozo came to be known as the dictionary definition of the beast. Deemed as one of the oldest morons to ever arrive at the sting house, the conversation he had with the setup was sickening to say the least. Right off the bat, when the crew caught on to the jerk, a limo driver in profession, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. The crew were about to uncover a very peculiar obsession of this oldie, and no, they were not ready for it. While most morons share pictures of themselves during online conversations, this one wanted something else. He wanted the setup to share her pictures with him. The man was so demented that he went to the extent of describing all the positions and angles that he expected to see her in. I know how it sounds like coming from an old man as old as him, but these are some of the demands he placed. Do you think you could take a picture of your blank for me? Feel so about yourself and take a picture. I can't even imagine something like this coming from a grandpa you'd look up to. I mean, if you ask me, such people don't deserve to live among the society. The kind of behavior he was displaying was downright disgusting, and it only gets worse. Michael was so blatant that he even asked the setup to share pictures of her while she was taking a sh I mean, like, really, man? Are you even that desperate? Did he just forget that he was old enough to be her granddad? Well, this man must be deranged to think that someone like her would be interested in him. But guess what? The crew was here to remind him of not only his advanced age, but also that the law doesn't tolerate sinners like him. But from what I've seen on the show, there is no age for weirdos like this. But it amazes me how this freak was so driven by just the thought of the act and visualizing things. This dude is the next level of being on fire. I mean, he'd put studs in their prime age to shame. While the crew was desperately trying to get his attention in an attempt to remind him of his age, Michael had other plans. I mean, why else do you think he would send a text like this? You're my girlfriend, and I'm your boyfriend. I love you so much, my angel. I can't wait to hold you in my arms and know that you are actually mine. Yup, he actually thought he was boyfriend material. Bro, can you please check if your equipment is even working? I mean, I don't think things could get weirder than this, but this dude actually surprised me. If his repulsive chats weren't enough, this crazy old man repeatedly called the girl just to listen to her voice, while on the other side, he was probably joggling his tool. Why else do you think he would sound like this? My little angel, I love you baby so much. Damn, that voice just hit me like a bolt of lightning. I don't know about you, but it sure did send shivers down my spine. I mean, how dreadful can you be to even think of talking to someone who is decades young? this. But you see what he was trying to do. He had already established the fact that he wanted to be a boyfriend. So the only thing he was trying to do through these repulsive telephone conversations was try and steady their relationship. Kind of like to cement it and gain her trust. Wondering why? Well, to get her pictures, of course. Now, this man was hell-bent on getting what he wanted, and he didn't mind courting for almost a month. Yep, Michael was so obsessed that he repeatedly sent frisky messages and voicemails just to woo the setup into his trap. But what he didn't know was that he was already in the clutches of the law, and this time, there was no escape. However, Michael was unaware of the several people working around the clock to nab monsters like him. Why else do you think he would share pictures like this? By the way, that's not a meme. It's a picture that the man himself shared with a setup during his long conversations online. When the picture hit the internet, people were soon to pitch in their hate for the demon that Michael was. But this is just the beginning. As Michael was just courting at the time, it was only when Michael received the green signal from the setup that he opened his wings. Now wait till you see the lengths he could go to do it. Michael was not done sharing pictures of him, and this nutcase was now prepared to unfold a whole new behavior, which was even more disgusting than the one you've already seen. 
because this time, Michael shared a range of photos with nothing on. There were pictures that he shot of himself bare, somewhere out and about in the forest, and then there was one in the living room. But the one picture that provided his psychotic instability was this. Well, that's him sitting in his natural form on the toilet. Well, now that might not sound entirely too weird, but sharing it with someone? I mean, I can't seem to understand the thought process behind taking a picture as nasty as this. But I guess it makes sense, considering that his screen name too gave away his core obsession. Well, I think Michael was actually the dictionary definition of a naturist. Ever heard of something like that? It's a term given to people who prefer to be in the natural form, like the way God made them, you can say, which is without actually having to cover themselves with anything man-made. And guess what? They actually enjoy it, and even urge others to take up their style of living. So you see how Michael fits this description? That's what he was, a naturist. But what makes him vile is that he didn't stop there. He started pestering the setup, and when I say pestering, I mean bombarding her with a range of messages that commanded her to take up the naturistic lifestyle. From asking her to go to bed with nothing, to asking her to start enjoying seeing humans in their natural forms, to hideous things like sharing his wild excursions at the river while sunbathing un. Honestly, Michael deserves to land in prison for this behavior, but what makes him even more scary is the fact that he saw two other random girls at his excursion site by the river, and apparently, they reminded him of the setup. Now, what makes this statement scary is that I hope Michael didn't meddle around with those chicks he saw earlier, because men like him can't be trusted. Well, it looks like we already have a good picture of what the man is all about. You won't believe it that I'm only getting started on this guy. It looks like this jerk was such a lowlife that he had absolutely nothing else to do than to engage the girl in some explicit conversations. And before I forget to mention, this psycho grandpa also asked the girl to imagine something hideous. I want you to imagine that the banana is me. Now, I don't have to go into the details of what he expected the girl to do with the banana, because men as deranged as Michael can only think of one thing, and you already know what it is. What's more is that he wanted her to take pictures of herself doing the deed and share it with him, because this handsome hunk was in tutor mode. Just of you. Yeah, maybe. LOL, no one will see them though, right? Just me. What I mean is that apparently this whole banana thing was a test so the setup could practice well, and of course she had the master himself to correct her if she goes wrong. This is just another level of grossness. Yep, that's what I feel right now. Gross! And since Michael had already established some sort of relationship, at least from his side, he started to show his next awful trait. Possessiveness! Yep, the man was beginning to get possessive of someone he hadn't even met. And before you think this was just another passing emotion, take a look at this message he shared with the setup. Never want to see my sweetheart with anyone. What he suggested right now was enough to land him in some major legal trouble. But the crew bit their lips, stayed glued to their seats, and waited for that one day when this horrendous jerk would finally arrive at the sting house. And one day, it happened. Michael was so swept away in his sinister thoughts that he could not help himself but drive an entire hour just to reach the doorstep of what would be his entrance to hell. While the crew was prepared to encounter one of their worst offenders yet, the the brute pulled off a stunt that nobody saw coming. Everything was going according to the plan, until Michael chose to walk inside and then do this. I'm really sorry. What was this man really up to? I mean, he just dashed into the house with his ever-beaming confidence, and then out of nowhere, slammed the window shut. Okay, I get why he was here in the first place, but what was the aggression all about? You can see the setup. Brittany dashed towards the other side of the frame be because this is not what she signed up for. But one thing I can tell you is that he sure did have crazier things planned for the day. It didn't even bother him that he was sneaking into the house in broad daylight. How high was this guy really? I guess. Grandpa was all set for some heavy action, but wait, it looks like he made other arrangements. And before he put his plan into action, Chris decided to cut in. But things don't go according to the plan. From closing the windows shut to bolting towards the exit at the first sight of a third person, did this moron already know something was going on, or was he just heading towards plan B? Either way, just because he bolted doesn't mean he got away, because thankfully, at least a dozen cops were waiting for this bozo, and he surrenders. Ah, what a delightful sight. Cops are waiting for him. Got anything on you? Well, serves him right. At least he knew that there was no use putting up a fight. Slapping the cuffs on him was just the first step towards understanding what lies 
is within the filthy mind of Michael Gentile. But that doesn't mean he can undo all the trauma he has already caused to people. However, it wouldn't mean that he wouldn't be able to repeat the same thing again. Before transporting him to the nearest interrogation center, the cops searched him and found a dangerous metal in his car. Well, it looks like Michael had plans to use not just his joystick, but even a knife. Seriously, dude? What were you planning on, really? Sadly for him, neither of his tools were going to be in use on this special date that he had with the detectives. On searching him further, the cops found a very interesting thing about him. They find a key card for a local hotel. Now, why would this old bozo need a key card to a local hotel when he has a house just an hour's drive away? Well, things are about to get even crazier from here. While the cops waited for the judge to issue a search warrant, and the line of questions he was to face was nothing compared to Chris's gentlemanly poise and behavior. The cops were brutal. So brutal that it got him speaking. When they checked with him about his marital status, this is what Michael had to say. Single divorced, married. Married. Soon to be divorced. Well, I'm glad he had at least got one thing right. This jerk you see had actually lied to his wife, who he dearly called the witch. I know, sounds crazy. But he told her that he was just going out to help a friend. Well, I think the very fact that he called his wife a witch says a lot about his character and the kind of relationship he shared with her. Well, I think she should be glad that it's over. Who was she even married to all these years? Just look at him. While the cops are doing their job, Michael doesn't phase at all. And finally, Michael learned about his bail amount, which was a whopping $500,000. And guess who he reached out to? His wife! And in three words, he summed up his situation when he said, I'm, I'm in jail. This. Oh, that was as smooth as it can get. Plain and simple, yet loud and clear. But what kind of wife would be willing to bail him out of the sticky situation that he was in? And here's the funny part. She actually thought it was some kind of a big joke, because who would imagine in their wildest dreams that their husband would land in jail for meeting a friend? This is not a joke. If you want, you can call back the police department and can give me that number. Well, the joke's actually on you, Michael, and it looks like he knew things were gonna boil up. And before that happened, he signed away his right to remain silent. The moron then went on to convince the cops how he thought the setup was in her 30s, and then claims to talk about this. What was your dialogue between the two of you? Just different things about every, everything. Like. Did he just really say that? So he was talking to a 30 year old about school? Yeah, right. It looks like Michael was running out of ideas because he next said that he thought he was in a role playing chat room. How much more are you gonna embarrass yourself, man? Just give in already. This bozo was talking as if he was going on this anonymous date. And guess where he thought he was headed to? Where is our parents? 30 year old lives in our parents? Yep, so you see how flawed his explanation was. Let me just make the plot clear for you right here. Michael claimed he was here to meet a 30-year-old at her parents' house to study. Look, man, if you want to lie, at least do it right. I mean, Michael was beginning to stutter, and he couldn't even say his screen name out aloud. So what's the, what's the common name you're using? Um... What is even scarier is that Michael admitted to being a frequent user of social media and dating platforms. Gosh, I can't imagine how many innocent souls he's held in his grip before. But Michael never budged. No matter how much the cops tried to tighten the noose around him, he persisted to be firm. She, it was said she was 34. No, not that. Right and that face of his just can't make a thing out of it. Was he in denial that he got caught, or was he actually freaking out inside? What do you think? This man is every parent's worst nightmare, and he was finally shown to the place he deserved to be in, the holding cell. But what is this I see here? Were the cops gate crashing his house, maybe? Police with a search warrant! Well, remember the key card to the hotel room from before? This was that very same hotel he had booked. The same one where he wanted to lure the setup into. And this hotel had more horrors than they expected. This was Michael's den. And the cops were shocked to find a whole lot of things, including this. Oh, there's the knife he was talking about. Whoa! It looks like the cops had hit a jackpot. This would be more than enough to gather all the evidence they needed to land someone as vile as Michael in jail. But nobody was prepared to find this. They find Gentile's digital camera. Well, 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 what do we have here now? A camera? It looks like Michael had planned to make an entire film out of his encounter when they got busy. And to make things worse, there were already enough pictures of similar encounters in the camera. Now, this was going to make the case even more solid, something Michael will never be able to come out of. Well, hear it from the chief himself. That is a an additional crime and an additional factor that we have to weigh. No wonder he was coaxing her to take 
take a drive with him. This was indeed a big violation, and Michael was soon charged with a long list of offenses, and he pleaded guilty to all of them. I'm glad this jerk had to spend several years in Connecticut State Pen, just as he should. The not-so-gentle Genteel was locked up in the slammer for four and a half years, which would be followed with 10 years on probation for 10 years and a lifetime registry in unsavory lists. Tough break for him, huh? Well, not really. He deserved it. Here's the latest picture and information that got on him online, and I think he looks just as repulsive as before. The man was officially released from jail on January 4th, 2021, which means he is a free bird now. Who could go back to what he was doing? Who knows? There may be more weirdos doing nasty things after being released from jail. One can never be too sure of morons like these.